you, how do you, uh, in a moment, how do you not fully join in and say, forget it, I'm not reporting this, I'm hitting back? Like, I noticed in here, one of the things is that, how did you stay so calm the moment of the raid? I know you were probably weren't calm, but to grab your camera and, like, try to blend into the trees, as you say, or felt like you were, and not throw a fist or try to save somebody or help or... How, that must have been hard to do because I think I would have said, ah, I can't, re I, you know. You know what? Like, at that moment in time. These are people you eat, sleep with, breathe with, fight with, you know. No doubt. Sweat with. How do you. But what is, like, what is my, what is my best skill to bring to that? Gotcha. Right? Like, no, what I, is I, that? Exactly. Is it, is it me waving around a stick or a can of bear mace or a, an unloaded rifle? Right. It's not. Because at that moment in time, there's cops. There's 300 cops yeah. in tour buses, uh, and there's not there's about out. 60 yeah. pinching us off. There's dogs. There's assault rifles. There's pistols drawn. Um, what are you going to do, right? And and in a in a lot of ways, it it might be that point of privilege to be raised this way too, like. I didn't have like okay. I didn't have the ideal nuclear family childhood where everything was la di da. But on the other hand, like when you're looking at, and uh, you know, like I I don't want to get into criticizing what went on from the warrior society side that day, because it's not for me to say. But on the other hand, I will say that it takes a certain kind of uh, you know wherewithal or a certain kind of like. Um, life experience mm -hmm. to just go like okay we're out we're this is like nobody's getting away here there it's right. totally like this is the display of force um uh, we'll be lucky not to be shot or killed so anything you do at this point is going to result in either pain death or at the if you're lucky a charge right and time in jail that's the bare minimum. So don't swear at the dog. Don't point a can of bear mace. Don't shoulder the rifle. Just understand, like, walk away to fight another day. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. And those, like, in the moment, those are things that you can say. But it does take that sort of, like, that, that like, okay, well, I wasn't raised to look for a father figure in a warrior society general. And, and, and like we could get into it, and I've thought about it for two years, right? right, right Why right, that right. goes on. And I d still don't have the answers because I'm not inside somebody's head who decides that the best they can do is uh, move a rifle up and down. I if fully understand choice, why you want to move that rifle up fully. No doubt. Well, I'm just day, trying to explain I know, to you I get, why I wouldn't. I get no and I, I think that that is really important that we all understand that we all have tools at our disposal and we got to understand which tool we can use best. Yeah. For some people fighting right and maybe becomes uh, I never want to see anyone hurt uh, that's the thing uh, but you know maybe that's what it is. For you I think you know the for you you have a pen and you and you know how to go with it. And I think you you hit very hard. I think you shook some people and I think it's good. I think the reason that you're sitting I think the reason this is still alive is uh, is partly because you've helped push it out beyond uh shut down that native issue. Nah, it's on the news for a minute. Look at the destruction of the vehicles. Ah, gone. I you wanted. Know? I wanted I us you, to remember you that you did shoulder your weapon that. Yeah. the right way. Yeah, I wanted us to remember this event beyond that because it's a very important event. I believe in our collective history. Yes, and it's not about six police cars on fire. No, not at all. So, what do you think? Was, what's the, the biggest point? misconception that people have? And let's go to you first, Annie. About. What was going about the blockade? I think some people look at it like they want, especially that day, like it was like, we want this fight or we want to fight or, or that, you know, we're, we're ready. We're armed to the teeth. Let's fight. We, we hate the cops, uh, even though they're ignoring the whole, you know, a lot of things. That's, I'm kind of loading that one for you. But what do you think for both of you, I guess, what's the biggest misconception about who was fighting uh, who is who's holding this blockade? We weren't the ones that started the blockade. Okay. Who started the blockade? DRCMP did. Right. 
They're the ones that blocked off the roads. See, that's a big mis. A lot of people, that's a big misconception. We were there standing. Right. And they're the ones that blocked us in. Mm -hmm. So that's where it all started. Right. Was they're the ones that blocked it. It wasn't us. That's important that people remember this. I watched, the, from what I saw that day, and I obviously I wasn't there, um, I watched the, the people of this, this country, and the people of this land more so, be surrounded and, you know, put, ready to be mowed down. From people that are paid to supposedly protect the people of this place. Is it fair to say that our RCMP is a, a bought and paid for security wing of corporate interests? I don't see how else it can be. Is that. It's a. You know, you know that whole thing like not all cops or whatever, not all RCMP? Sure. Were, the, were there RCMP that you feel to this day are still like. I'm sure there's good people there, quote unquote, but it seems like there was a lot of people just ready to, to mow down natives. I mean, you see quotes in like. You know, it doesn't surprise me as much as I don't want it to be true, but, you know, the land belongs to the crown, that line in there, not to bleeping natives. Like, it seems like this was a, a executionary force that wasn't far away from, from doing that. Yeah, I, I place a lot of that. I need the, and I, I feel that the RCMP needs to shoulder the blame for this. Okay. I still feel that that blockade or that maneuver on that blockade, I will I'll probably swear it up and down until the day I die. That was meant for a maximum provocation. That was meant for maximum conflict to occur. That, that injunction that they were serving on that morning was meant to liberate that equipment. Yeah. It was not meant to harass, right. pinch off a group of men at 6 or 7 in the morning with 70 guns drawn. And essentially, whatever reinforcements were necessary, mm -hmm. just on the underpass. Right. That's the t that's the road that they took. That's the maneuver that they choose. They chose, and they had no. They they said it in court. You know, in in the trial of Junior and Aaron, they said they had no credible evidence that there were arms there that day up until they found them. Convenient. You know what? There were there were numerous informers. At least two on the RCMP payroll that were um, related to drugs. Uh, those those are documents you can access, and so I'm sure there you know probably uh, a fear that they would grab some drugs or whatever, or knew that there were drugs there. Right. And so coming through, however they could, they they were on a fishing expedition, and they were on and you know I I listened to that that police video. Uh, of that raid and there's a moment where junior has a rifle and there's a very heated situation rcmp are going and trying to arrest the war chief and each time they do he gets tense and begins to shoulder it there's no communication with an art with a an emergency response guy across the highway who's got him in his sights and every time he begins to shoulder it, this guy begins to squeeze the trigger and you can hear the audio of a guy with the camera going, we're at a standoff. Like, it's, he's got a gun. It's not really, we're not moving here. And you can hear, I know the man's name. It's uh, Staff Sergeant Rick Bernard. You can hear him go, perhaps it's time to, you know, move in or do a little more encouragement. I can't remember the exact words that he says, but it's like the notion that, well, I'm, I'm bored. Or like, you know, like it's not going quite fast enough, so let's speed it along here, folks. Uh, and so if this man perishes, you know, who cares? I'm really? not really reading between the lines when you're saying basically maybe we should just pop him and get this thing started. Is that kind of what he was saying? Uh, pretty much. Shoot him, let's get this going. Or let's just end this. Yeah, we're let's, just, let's end this. We're on the payroll, folks. Like we got three hundred cops we gotta pay here. So to me, when you say maximum provocation, now. one of the things that really hits me here is the use of the tobacco ceremony yeah. the night before. It's, it's, the uh, night before, that, that to me is where I really believe, like the maximum provocation to me, not only guns on people, which is going to make you, I mean, you put a gun on anyone, come on now. Mm -hmm. It's your life right now. You're going to react. You're not going to like that. You're, you're going to, 
But to come and, and offer peace or, or you know, I, I, I mean, I know tobacco is sacred. Mm -hmm. I don't know all the ins and outs of it, of course. But I to come and offer that and then the next day... It seems like he was like, hey, it's only, it's a sucker punch. And not only that, but... It's a total sucker punch. Like, that's dirty as hell, and I think you need to know and who did. how to play that. You need to know that that's the worst thing you could do in a way. I mean, and can you speak is, to that? Yes, tobacco is sacred. Yes. And the one that offered the tobacco was Knew that. native. Right. He's not only so he sorry. knew what he was doing. Right. He knew. And to do that and then the very like it's like saying, Hey man, everything's great. Bam. bam. <laughs> I mean, I mean one thing to say bam, 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 big bam. At least you know, okay, we know we're A, we know but to say, Hey, let's be cool, let's be cool. <laughs> and then that's where I just think that is not And then how high up does this go? I, how high up does it go? I hate to like you know be the guy with the aluminum hat on, but I'm not. I don't think you are at all. One of the guys that offered the tobacco is a member of the Mi'kmaq Grand Council. So what does that mean? Well, what it right? means, I mean, to How me... How high up does this go?